Hey traders, welcome back to Tiffany Trades Options. My name is Tiffany and I love to trade stock options. I wanted to provide a very quick update before I jump into the trade demonstration and let you know that as of yesterday, June 15th, this channel reached 100 subscribers and that is really awesome. I feel so happy to know that there are 100 people out there who are watching my channel and hopefully learning something new and different about options trading and I'm very happy that you're here and I find it a privilege and an honor to be able to help you if I can and if I'm not and you're just here for the entertainment value then that's great too. So I just wanted to extend a very heartfelt thank you to you as the viewers. I'm happy that you're here. Please keep reaching out. Please commenting. I've been hearing from you. I love it. I love talking to people about options trading. So with that said, thank you so much. I hope to see this channel continue to grow. Please continue to like, leave comments, and, and tell your friends to subscribe because it's really awesome and I'm just very happy. So thanks. Let's get into the trade. internet based platform today is the 18th I filmed the intro a couple days ago because I was just too excited and I just wanted to get all my thoughts and feelings on video as I was thinking them so um, today's the 18th and this video is actually gonna come out later today on the 18th because I wanted to try to get as close to real time as possible um, but understanding that you guys will probably be seeing this later in the day or even following the 18th so I guess um, just kind of We'll just bear with me there. Um, so these are the positions that I have on in the Tiffany Trades Options account. And the SPY position I've had on for a long time. And up until last Wednesday when the Fed had their announcement, this position was doing really well. It had gained like 66% and had been sort of in the $30 profitable range. But I'm not really sure what's going to happen over the next few weeks. And... Um, although 30 days is a long time and anything can happen, I'm going to close this position today for a profit and try to collect 20 bucks. If you recall, I put on this position of, oof, when was this? At the end of May. So it's been about a month now. Um, I paid $52.30 to open this position. So I'm going to try to, ooh, maybe I'll get $26 out of it. We'll see. So I'm going to close this. And unlike our previous, um, trades where when you sell a put credit spread you would collect credit immediately and then you would buy it back for less price and therefore take a debit this is the inverse so i will be collecting a credit in this case because previously i paid 52 dollars to open this trade so we'll just go ahead and see what happens here it'll be 22 dollars profit less um, some fees and then it'll increase the buying power by 71.68 um, so we see Netflix is on as well. I accidentally put this one on because I wasn't paying attention to the account that I was in when I was trading. Netflix's earnings are coming up on July 16th, and as it gets closer to earnings, volatility is going to increase for the trade, which means that although Netflix is out of the money, this trade probably isn't going to decrease in value um, for a little bit longer because of volatility. So we're just gonna kinda have to sit patient with this one and see what happens. Here is the Apple trade that I put on. I rolled up the puts for credit. Um, I collected an additional 1541. So right now the cost basis for the trade is 185.81. I don't think Apple is going to drop below 335 before July 10th. So I'm gonna show you how I would mitigate this trade this is a personal preference. You don't have to do this. Um, as I've said previously, I will transform trades in any way possible to collect credit. So just keep that in mind. This will end up being a loss on a profit and loss statement, but at the end of the day, if you're collecting credit, you're still profitable. So um, we'll just take that for what it's worth. I'm going to close this. Actually, I'm going to roll this position and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do about that. So generally in the Tastyworks platform, when you roll, it gives you an option to roll the equivalent trade. So it would be rolling from the July 10th calls to the July 17th calls. But I'm actually going to do something different, which is turn these into puts. So we just cancel these out and then set up a put spread on the other side. 
So you'll see that you will be buying and selling to close the calls, but then you'd be buying and selling to open the puts. So right now this is a $56 debit. Apple is currently trading at 351.96. Apple's next earnings are July 28th. It's trending very bullish, although it has had a little bit of a dip. That was last week after the Fed announcement. Um, it didn't go too far below 340. So we can just roll this up. 345, 340. So if we rolled this up to August 21st, that's 64 days away, you can collect 23 cents in credit. So instead of taking a loss, you would just take credit instead. But keep in mind that this is a $5 wide put credit spread, which means it's gonna take up more buying power. So this is just another indication that Tastyworks and E-Trade are a little bit different in terms of tracking their earnings. You just wanna look through multiple platforms and check out which one um, might have the more possibly more accurate information. So if this trade goes through, it would be a, a loss on paper, but you would still be collecting credit. Um, and it also would take up 500 and sorry, $482 in buying power because this would be essentially traded as a new trade. They would have multiple, you'd have two put credit spreads on an Apple. You'd have one for the July 10th, and then you'd have one for the um, August 21st. And so these are two individual trades. We can mitigate that by closing out the July 10th one, but that's certainly a matter of preference as well. I don't anticipate Apple will be getting down to 3.30 before the 22nd, and this is already a little bit profitable anyway, so maybe that's something that I'll do. To ensure a greater probability of success, you can put on the same trade at just a little bit lower of strikes, so 3.40 or 3.35. You collect less credit. If we don't want to mess around with earnings, you can put on the trade before the 28th, and this would certainly be before the 8th of August. Um, it's a little illiquid, so you can see that these credit numbers are fluctuating pretty widely. I think I'm actually going to do this instead. I don't want to mess around with earnings. I don't really know um, what is going to happen, because earnings for the next quarter, I think, are going to be much more important than the earnings that we just went through, especially following um, pandemic and the continued implications that shut down and the like are having on the market. So um, I am very curious to see earnings results for the next quarter and how stocks are going to be treated at that point. But um, as I've said before, the market is kind of strange and you can never really predict what's going to happen. All right, so what I'm going to do before I do anything with the Apple trade is I'm going to wait for this to get filled because I want to increase the buying power just a little bit more. So we'll just kind of stay tuned and see what happens there. Okay, so it's been a few hours now since I put on the SPY order and it still has not filled. And I don't think it will get filled today unless SPY moves in the upward direction, um, which is fine. I'm fine with that. I don't want to lower this credit limit order because I don't want to take less profits than I think that I deserve. So I'm going to let this continue to sit for the rest of the trading day. And if it doesn't get filled, then the order will just expire. Um, and I also wanted to go back and take a look at the Apple position. It's starting to, de it just decreased by about a dollar or so since earlier, um, which, you know, that happens. Stocks trade within ranges each day. And so this is normal. So one thing that I was thinking about before that I didn't mention was that there are some risks to converting this call credit spread to a put credit spread. And that would be potentially being a little bit more exposed to Apple. So that would mean that there would be two put spreads on for Apple. And if Apple for some reason took a turn against us, then we're exposed in two trades instead of just one. So this is just something to be mindful of, and it depends on the size of your account. But the reason that I trade small and I trade in various stocks and ETFs is just to um, have more occurrences and more, more probabilities of success. Um, 
So there's nothing wrong with having more than one position on in a in a specific stock, but the, just keep that in mind if you're placing multiple positions or multiple um, multiple options trades on a specific stock because you don't want to be overexposed in one any one direction or the other. Um, so I'm not. I'm not going to do anything with this today. I'm, I'm going to wait for this spy order to get filled. Um, it looks like Netflix might be profitable soon. I'm going to try to close this out around 25%, but if I just kind of get sick of it, I might close it out a little bit less. As far as I'm concerned, $10 profit is $10 profit. It's $10 that I didn't have before, so um, that's pretty cool. So I'll keep you guys updated there. Um, one thing that I did while I was waiting for this order to get filled is um, I reviewed the account history and realized that it had been almost a month since I um, deposited some money. And so I just went ahead and did the other, the additional $250 per month. And so that increased the buying power a little bit earlier. It hasn't um, reflected here yet because it'll take a day or two, but Tastyworks has this option where It'll grant you buying power while your funds are processing. So that's pretty cool. Um, this is the trade history of the account since um, it has been opened. So if you are interested in this information, I'm just going to quickly scroll through here for you. Um, and another thing, too, that I wanted to point out to you guys, since this doesn't look like that these trades are going to be very successful, is one thing that I spend a lot of time doing throughout the day is looking at um, the charts. And so it's really interesting when you see sort of the up and down of um, a particular stock or an ETF. And this is this is the SPY um, ticker. And I wanted to sort of track price action today and figure out what's going on and why it was taking so long for the trade to get filled. And I noticed this big down move. And it's not, it's not super big in the sense that it's like, it's going from about 312 down to 3. 1067 um it's just it, it it just looks pretty pretty dramatic um when you zoom in and you want to sort of figure out like why is it going that down that fast that quickly so um i just wanted to point out some some market news sources that i rely on to sort of keep up with what's going on in the market and um this is finviz this is just a free um screener uh, news all kinds of other stuff. I, I use it primarily for news. So just go to finviz.com and click on news and you can sort of keep up with what's happening in the news, which I find very helpful. So if there's something that's happening and I'm like on Reddit or I'm on other sources and I'm like, why is the market reacting the way it is? I always come on here to try to figure out um, what happened and why the market is doing what it's doing. Um, another helpful resource is Bloomberg. <clears throat> this is like one of the primary financial news sources that I rely on. Um, Bloomberg does have a subscription service, so you're only allowed to review, like, I think it's like five articles per month before they, um, put up a paywall and then you have to pay for it to keep going. But I, I don't tend to really read the articles. I always kind of come here for the headlines, just to sort of stay up to date. Um, you can keep up with other, um, markets and other indexes and indices, sorry, and, um, what's going on, news articles here. And then Market Watch is the other... Um, website that I look at to stay up to date on the markets. I usually just kind of check out what's going on the latest. Um, so these are the three sources of um, news that I look at to kind of stay up to date and keep keep abreast of the issues. And um, as, as much as I hate to admit this, I actually do look at Reddit a lot um, because a lot of people I think are now trading more and they're on the Reddit subreddit. Sorry. <laughs> People are now trading more frequently um, because of they're probably at home more and it gives them more access to be able to um, do what they want with their funds. But Reddit has been very helpful to sort of keep up with what's going on as well. I'm not going to call it any specific subs, but some of them are um, funnier and more entertaining than the others. But they also do have really good information if you can weed through sort of, you know, the locker room chat, so to speak. Um, so that's another source that I look at as well. Um, and it's also a good source for just asking questions generally if you're on there. I'm, I'm sometimes on, in there and under the Tiffany Trades options. Um, username, occasionally answering questions there as well. But um, so yeah, so that's it. I still have another hour and a half today. So if that, um, if this stuff gets filled, I will post it to my Instagram account. 
at Tiffany Trades Options, and if not, then I will just try for another day. Um, please let me know if you have any questions, if you want to see me um, open any specific trades around any specific stocks or ETFs. Happy to explore the um, the request. I will say that I am going to stay far, far away from the Hertz company and what's going on with that. Um, so yeah, so that's it. So I'm sorry that it didn't work out. I just hope that um, you were able to learn something new, at least with the Apple trade and how you can convert a call spread to a put spread. Um, and like I said, I, I'm so happy that you're here. I'm so glad to be of service to you. So if you do have any questions, please do me a favor and drop them in the comments below. And then I will touch base with you guys next week. All right. Bye.